You are listening to No, You're Crazy. My name is Susan Denae. We all have crazy. What separates us is how we choose to deal with it. I'm going to be delivering engaging and actionable tools to own your crazy, treat your crazy, and turn it into your own superpower. I hope that you walk away from this show feeling the power and strength within you. And never forget to enjoy your journey because you are worth it. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Know Your Crazy Talk Show. My name is Susan Denae, and you are listening or watching the podcast of Know Your Crazy. On my podcast, I like to talk about emotional recovery in the raw. Uh, Simply put, what type of emotional hurdles do we face throughout day to day? What do we do about it? What does that feel like? And how responsible are we uh, for our own personal journey? Um, And as I infuse all those today, all those topics of emotional recovery, uh, I'm gonna be focusing uh, in a roundabout way on the holidays and know you're crazy around the holidays and how do the holidays impact you? If you're someone around the holiday season who really hasn't experienced the loss of a loved one yet, um, or uh, you, you know, you've had a pretty, you know, functional, great time around the holidays, this show may not be for you. Uh, you know, this show may not be for you, but who it may be for today are the folks who, like myself, have experienced loss of someone, especially recently with over the last one or two years. Um, Other folks who, perhaps like me, you may be in recovery from alcoholism and addiction and simply staying sober through the holidays, it's a thing, you know? Uh, Why is that a thing? Those those are the topics that I'm gonna be talking about today on the show. Uh, So if you are struggling around the holidays for whatever reason, Uh, This show may help you today to provide some solution to what you can do to feel better around this time, perhaps maybe some mindset shifts for you, so that when you go through these next uh, few months, even even though Thanksgiving has already passed, but we are up against the big one. (laughs) I call the big one, you know, the the big holiday uh, for all those politically correct folks out there, uh, for the other folks who are comfortable with the word Christmas. It's the big one. Christmas is kind of the the sentimental, nostalgic holiday that can be a trigger for large amounts of uh, guilt for overspending, uh, self-pity if you're a lonely person or single person who feels you have nobody to hang out with, uh, overindulgence uh, for those of us who, you know, overdo it. Uh, expectations set high because, oh my God, it's the holiday and I've got three families I'm supposed to please. I've got my in-laws, I've I've got my immediate family, I've got my kids, you know, expectations everywhere. What's the plan? The inner dynamics of communication with your partner, if you tend to have families on each side of the spectrum that you're trying to satisfy, you know, all those emotional tipping points. You know, I did a show recently about the emotional tipping points of certain conversations. Well, today I'm talking about the emotional tipping point of the holidays. And why is that? Why does that occur? You know, I was sitting in a uh, AA meeting. I was sitting in an AA meeting uh, over Thanksgiving. My, my husband and I somehow managed to arrange the Thanksgiving dinner, which between him and I, we have five children. We're a blended family. Uh, Three of them are old enough to be out of the house and beginning their journey of their own life, which means that they, some of them have partners and they're now in that phase of, of uh, figuring out how do we go to all these houses, right? So that's the phase they're in. But somehow on Thanksgiving, uh, partly due to my quite frankly, just kind of being out of it for the last, I don't know, several weeks. I just kind of hit a weird space uh, mentally and emotionally for myself. But I ended up putting the turkey in at like six o'clock in the morning. And then I realized the damn thing's done in like four hours. Uh, I had told everyone noon for dinner. I, I don't know why I said noon. It seemed kind of early, but whatever. But somehow it all worked out. We we had managed to have a rotating door of of older kids coming in with their partners, younger kids sticking around until they could leave. And, 
you know, we're a blended family. So that means that my husband and I are, are both uh, divorced. And so there's the other parent on the other side of that, that the kids need to arrange with. So there's like all this stuff, right? So if you're a blended family out there around the holidays, I feel you. I so feel you because there is, a there's just like navigating that goes on. And so how do I as an adult participating in the rigmarole of all of this. And I'm going to get back to that AA meeting I talked about as a recovered woman in sobriety, how do I keep my sanity and how do I keep my crazy functional? Because the crazy can be functional. It's not all bad, right? It's not all bad. Uh, so back to the AA meeting. So I'm sitting there in Thanksgiving. Oh, that's why I went off on that tangent. We had everybody out of the house by three o'clock which meant that my husband and I uh, had the opportunity in the later evening to do what we wanted to do. And I said, hey, why don't we go over to one of the uh, AA halls for a meeting? Uh, something I, I usually haven't entertained over the last several years. Uh, but it's really cool uh, tradition for the folks in Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, God forbid I talk about this on a public forum because we do have a tradition. We're not supposed to do that. But I, I really... When something works so well, I, I just feel that it's it's just important sometimes to share that with the world. Uh, but everybody, you know, AA gives a place for folks to go so that they're not alone. And uh, certain AA halls will host big potluck dinners. And I know there's other uh, places for this, but this is actually on the holiday. Um, I'm sure churches probably do that same sentiment and, and uh, homeless places probably do that same sentiment. But this is the day of and for uh, an alcoholic or a drug addict who's trying to stay sober over the holidays, it's kind of a big deal to surround yourself with people. Um, and that's in that round, that's in that world. But even if you're somebody who's sober uh, and, and you're really lonely around the holidays, or maybe you've lost your partner, uh, you know, I was thinking when I was sitting in this meeting that day, and it was probably about 15 people, how awesome it was that people had a place to go and to share their experience with what they were experiencing. Uh, sometimes folks will talk about the holiday, other times they don't. Uh, but for those of you who struggle around the holidays, I would just like to say there's a lot of open halls of recovery that welcome folks, and it's a big potluck, and there's a lot of joy, and there's a lot of satisfaction uh, that goes on, and there's great conversation. And so, you know, there's things out there in the world, and this is kind of kind of uh, streamline where I'm, I'm headed with the show today. You know, when we get around the holiday season, one of the first things I started to research when I was uh, debating on doing the show uh, around this topic was what happens to our brain? You know, well, what is the brain with sentiment? I mean, isn't that really at the core of what's going on around the holidays? If, if we're feeling, if we get into a place of feeling sad, uh, perhaps even lonely or uh, self-pity for ourselves, isn't it usually around sentiment? And because that's kind of what the holiday spark and other holidays can do that too. Our, our birthday can do that if we don't have anybody to celebrate it with. Uh, different different mar anniversaries can do that if we've lost a partner. You know, there's there's these holidays and we, and we place all this important importance on a date. You know, there's something to be said for traditions, pro and con, in my opinion. Uh, you know, how big I want to make a day regarding my personal joy and happiness. It is up to me, but there's this thing out in the world and in our lives called influence. And whether we like to admit it or not, each of us have our own unique experience with the holidays and with big days because of how we have been influenced throughout our lives, who we chose to pick up that influence from. Uh, let's say we have a, you know, a parent that may have influenced us. I mean, look at our world around the holidays. It's everywhere. It's in the marketing uh, everyone's talking about it. I mean, friends, family, you know, usually the majority of people I have found celebrate this fall, fall and winter season of holidays. You know, some don't, but the majority do. And it's so, uh, so celebrated that you see it everywhere. I mean, there's Black Friday. So, you know what I mean? So there's Black Friday there. There's, you know, the Macy's parade. There, there's all this emphasis on this holiday. And the motive behind that, I would love to think that, you know, most of us come from a really honest and loving place that we all are hoping for a joyful, fantastic, filled holiday. And then there's the reality of the sadness or the loneliness that it can trigger within us. 
and based on how we were influenced. Let's say we were influenced growing up that we were to be surrounded by family during this time. That uh, this was a, you know, a Christmas day dinner or holiday dinner or Christmas Eve gaming. And suddenly we look around and most of our family has transitioned or passed away. Or, you know, we, we've moved states, uh, we're in a new area for the first time, and, and we really don't connect, we haven't connected with anybody yet. So we feel lonely. Maybe we didn't have the money to travel back home like we wanted to. But we were influenced to believe that we were meant to be around people during this time. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm like, as I'm saying this, I'm thinking of all the Christmas shows as a kid and, you know, how everybody comes around and enjoys it. Why am I going in this angle with this? Because when we really look at how we're influenced, what we have done over time, no matter how old you are, is we place in a set of expectations of what it is supposed to look like. And those expectations that we have now attached to, we use as a way to determine how we feel. And so we will measure our success on how we feel based on how are our circumstances matching up with up to this point in my life, how I have been influenced to believe this holiday season is supposed to be. I hope I'm not going too uh, deep here with some of you, but the point is the holidays aren't easy for everybody. The holidays are not easy for everybody. In fact, I would, I would argue that the increase of relapse in alcoholism and addiction, go, you know, there's an increase in relapse I would venture to say that we probably see uh, some more suicides around this time of the year. Like it's not all blissful. You know, we as a society have, have really placed a lot of emphasis around these holidays. You know, the other thing I was um, thinking about was, you know, it, and you've heard me say this a few times, but, you know, we lost my father to COVID in 2020. And for our small family unit, which was my sister, myself, and my mom and dad, that was the first out of us four to go, you know, to transition. And he died on December 18th. And he was in the hospital uh, from October 20th up until the day he passed, which meant that my mom was without him for Thanksgiving. She was without him for her birthday. Uh, and she was without him for their, would have been their 56th anniversary. And she was also without him for Christmas. You know, folks, that's a lot of first in a very short amount of time. And I know we're all tired of hearing about the pandemic and COVID, but there's many of you in this audience right now who probably experienced the loss of someone close to the pandemic. I mean, what were the numbers of people who passed away? And here we are in 2022, making an attempt to move on and, and to do these things. And yet a lot of us experienced a significant loss uh, and we are only in our first or second holiday season without our loved ones. And what that can feel like is it can feel lonely. Uh, you know, I mentioned sentiment, you know, how much we attach to that, that feeling of what it used to be like. Uh, when I looked up sentiment, I was looking up, you know, what is the definition of that? Um, it's a tenderness. It's a sadness. It's nostalgia. Then I looked up what is nostalgia? And it is a longing for past, it's a longing for the past with a feeling of affection, uh, particularly for happiness of a period or a certain place and time. You know, what better time to become nostalgic and sentimental than around the holidays? And as we peer back in the past, seeking for ways in which either we used to feel good around the holidays, if we've been through a life change, and then today we don't have that, what that can do to us emotionally is it can really take us down. It can really take us down. And so when I'm talking about the expectations, I'm talking about where are the expectations that you've had around the holidays? And this is in particularly, in particular for someone who, uh, is challenged a little bit around the holidays. You are challenged. You, you, you've lost somebody close to you or you're in, it's just, it's a time this year that can feel very sad, even when you know it's not supposed to. You know, I guess when I, and I say that very lightly about not supposed to, 
like the world is sending an influential message. This is a, you know, this is a loving time and all of that, which I'm not taking away that. But what I'm simply saying is if you're someone who gets sad around the holidays and you're trepidatious about the, the day even coming up, because where am I going to be? How am I going to be? What am I going to feel? I feel lonely. This shows for you today. This shows for you today. All right. Story time. Let me tell you a story. So for those of you who are divorced and you are in the throes of who are the kids with, maybe this is the first holiday season that you've been divorced. Uh, I remember when my first husband and I came to the conclusion that we were going to divorce. It was at the, what I would say, the this I'll say the worst time of the year because it was around the holiday season. I think it was in um, the end of October or it might've been the end of October, middle of November when it finally was like, this is the, this is the direction we're going to take. And we had three, we had three daughters of ours and then we had, uh, he has one older daughter at the time. And so here you've got these four girls, you know, anywhere from the ages of the oldest was um, uh, 18. And then they went, you know, nine, five and like one. Right. And, you know, you're sitting here with your family and, and your kids and it's right around the holiday season and you're having to break the news to them that mom and dad are going to be divorced. And I remember in De this was in December of 08. I remember back then pleading with my then husband to stay in the house, at least through the month of December, because, see, I had so much emphasis on Christmas and what that was going to be like for my girls to experience. Like I was so scared of that and it was just tugging at my heartstrings and in defense of him, he was unable to do that. And he had his own reasons, you know, it, where, you know, sometimes when you're in that type of a breakup, it's easier to, and, and, and much more beneficial even to just cut the strings and get out of the view. If you want to move on in the view of the partner, and so that was his decision. And so here we were in the month of December, like almost mid-month, and he was moving out of the house, uh, moving up the street. And I remember coming home uh, somewhere in there after he had, you know, taken all of his belongings and I was still in the same house and just feeling, you know, the emptiness of that home. And I remember feeling uh, like this was brand new and it was odd. We had been together for 12 years. We had had a full family, lots of activities in that home. You know, the home becomes your home, the kids, their toys. I mean, everything, everything's being uprooted. The day of Christmas, you know, everybody goes through their, most people will go through their divorce decrees and figure out who's got what, you know, it's a healthy way to do it. If um, just to keep things even, so there's no weird stuff going on. Uh, and and fortunately for him and I, we were able to be amicable, uh, really like 99.9% .9 of our entire divorce. Uh, that that eight-year-old of ours is now, you know, 22 or 23, right? She's one of those ones that came over for Thanksgiving and then was gone by three o'clock to go to his house. But, um, but that Christmas morning, and this is why I'm sharing this, that Christmas morning, uh, I had the youngest with me and he was at his house with the two older girls and his daughter. And I woke up Christmas morning with the plans that day to go to his house where I was going to be around his family. Um, I There were emotions and feelings about how I was perceived at that time back then. Uh, and, you know, all the things you go through in divorce. And then here we are on Christmas Day. And that's what I call it. I call it Christmas Day. So here I am Christmas morning. Um, I go back, my, my little girl is uh, sleeping and the house feels empty. It feels really, really empty. And I fell to my knees crying in emotional pain because I felt so alone in what used to be our family home, waking up to no family and a new way of doing things. And I just didn't know what to do. And it was some of the, when, it, when I look back on my life, there's like certain times in your life when you will have an experience that you just don't forget. When I look back on that moment, that's one of those experiences. And I share that story with you today, a bit of an intimate story, 
But I share that story with you today because there's people listening to this right now that could potentially be in that spot. And so what do you do? So here's what I did. I picked up the phone and I called a dear friend of mine in the middle of my crying, in the middle of my emotional, you know, uproar. And she picked up the phone and I just began to pour my heart out. You know, this particular woman uh, was a mentor of mine at the time and she had been through divorce and I had been uh, working with her through, you know, getting through this process. I have never been so thankful for somebody to pick up their phone. And she talked me through that. You know, and I remember I had gotten out of the shower. I had a towel and my bathrobe on. And, and here I am just like, I couldn't function. I, I couldn't even think about getting the makeup on and the hair dried. I mean, I, I was paralyzed in my emotion and in my sadness. And this wasn't even self-pity. This was just grieving. This was grief. This was sadness. And she simply got me moving. Stand up. Here's what you're going to do. And so I had to place my trust in somebody who, uh, bene who, who would influence me. And, and that's another thing I, I want to convey today is who you place your trust in for influencing you is very important. <laughs> you know, when, when you look around in your life, especially during this time of season, and you are needing support because this is a challenge for you. And, and you're aware that you've experienced some loss of, of folks or relationships in your life or whatever it is, right? Um, you know, who are you using to go to and have that have that planned out a little bit? You know, the the whole podcast of Know You're Crazy uh, and Emotional Recovery in the Raw is for me to provide a platform of sorts to help guide you with solutions so that when you get emotionally hijacked in a negative way, that you have tools to apply to help lift you up and pull you out of that spot. And this isn't all about psychotherapy, folks. This isn't about getting deep about traumatic wounds in the past. That's not what this is about. Because when you're on your knees and you are crying and begging in pain, there ain't no analyzing that traumatic childhood you had. That's not what that's about. That's about in the moment, grieving and pain. And what are you going to do about it? Because there is a place and there is an appropriate time to process traumatic events in our life. But when you are in it, and that's why I'm having this show today, because being in it tends to be triggered around the holiday season. What are you going to do? What I did back then in December of 08 was I picked up the phone and I called somebody, but I had that number ahead of time. I knew what I was walking into ahead of time. Those of you who are watching this right now who are like, yeah, I lost somebody uh, and, and, this, you know, and you've already been saying that Christmas is going to be hard or the holiday is going to be hard or you're already setting yourself up for loneliness because we will do that. We will set ourselves up. For loneliness, we will set ourselves up for self-pity. We will set ourselves up for sadness. And then when it arrives, we act like we're shocked. Like, where did that come from? You know, so I thought, you know, today when I was thinking about doing this show, you know, doing a holiday show new for me, I thought, you know, it's, it's a merry time. of, It's not merry for all of us. So here's some tools so that you can get ahead of that curve so that when these holidays arrive, that they can be enjoyable for you if that's what you're choosing to do. But don't let the influence of the nostalgia and of the sentiment that you have felt over the years hijack you into a place of a miserable holiday because there's things that you can do. There's things that you can do. You know, as I was sitting in that uh, AA meeting on Thanksgiving and I'm watching just the power of that meeting and the topic in that meeting wasn't even around the holiday. Some people naturally shared about that. But the topic was, I believe, was about being judgmental or something. And But to see everybody engage, what I thought when I was sitting in that meeting is what a beautiful thing that these folks have a place to go, that these folks have a place to go. So let's talk to you folks who are experiencing loneliness around the holiday. Uh, let's talk to you single folks who are aware that you don't have a partner to celebrate the holiday with. 
and you've already thought about that. And maybe you've thought about it and then you've stuffed it and gone about your day, but there's this little thing that hangs on there. What can you do differently this holiday to prevent you from feeling lonely? Is there someone's house you can be at? Is there a gathering that you can join in? Like, what can you do to not be lonely this upcoming holiday? Because really the loneliness, I would probably say between the loneliness and the grieving are the top two things that can really take a person off guard. So when I get back from break, I'm going to take a minute or two break here. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about the loneliness and I'm going to talk about grief around the holidays and what you can do to change that up for you. All right, if you're watching this show and hopefully it's a service to you, if you have any questions for me or any comments, feel free to email me. Uh, the email is growthspurt at susandenay.com. Uh, you can also check it out on any of my social media sites. Would love to comment if you have any uh, questions. All right, be back. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Know Your Crazy Talk Show. My name is Susan Denae, and you are listening or watching the Know Your Crazy podcast, where I like to talk about emotional recovery in the raw. And today's topic, holidays. Yes, the holidays. Are they emotionally tripping for you? That's the question today. Are they emotionally tripping for you? Because they tend to carry with them a lot of nostalgia, a lot of sentiment, and a lot of expectations. If you join me for the first half hour of the show, I've been talking about really the reasons behind uh, getting emotionally uh, tipped during this time of year. Um, also the sensitivity around it, how many people are actually struggling this year. Um, I briefly mentioned, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic, and perhaps some of you would even argue we are out of the pandemic. Uh, you know, thank God, right? Uh, however, many of us, myself included, lost dear ones to the pandemic. You know, we lost, I think, millions of people to the pandemic. So imagine how many folks around this holiday season are being impacted by grief, loneliness. You know, my story, we lost my dad in December of 20. In fact, he passed away on December 18th, seven days later. Uh, we were attempting to celebrate a Christmas with my mom as she was grieving the loss of her husband, as I was grieving the loss of a dearly loved father along with my sister. And getting through the holidays that first time and even the first couple times can be very tragic for those who have lost the loved ones close to them. You know, as we begin to see the, the rates of overdose of drug addiction and fentanyl, you know, my heart goes out to any family members this year who or friends of, of those who they lost someone close to them uh, based on overdoses or addiction. You know, this could be the first holiday that you're facing without them. You know, one of the things I learned in the grieving process with my father when, when he transitioned and when he passed away and in the several months that followed after that was part of the difficulty around that time was really witnessing those who are suffering uh, along with my own suffering. But sometimes as adults, we have children, we have, you know, sisters or elderly parents who we're caring for, and we love them tremendously. And this is a really challenging time, sometimes not only for us, but for them. But witnessing their struggle and their pain can be very traumatic for a lot of us. You know, why are the holidays such an emotionally tripping time? And, and I talked about this in the first half of the show. It's because we have a set expectation about how perhaps we want to feel during this time. There's nostalgia. There's a, there's a sweetness with which we reflect in the past about how it felt. We have nice memories sometimes, loving memories of family traditions and celebrations. I think one of the most uh, brilliant pieces of feedback I got uh, in the early years of my divorce, which I, I touched on uh, the first Christmas without my family in the home and how traumatic that was for me back then, but one of the best pieces of feedback I got from somebody who I was uh, actually, I think it was a therapist at the time, was she asked me what my traditions were going to be in the future for me and my children. And I was heartbroken, you know, because we had always had a tradition. This, this is kind of what we had done. And, and the future was scary to me because there was no set tradition going forward. 
you know, and I'm sharing this experience with you in case this helps you in some way to know that you get to change traditions. Many traditions are meant to be broken. And some people may not like to hear that, but if we're living with old beliefs or we're attempting to live with old beliefs and old traditions that are not serving the circumstances as they are today, I will tell you there will be a conflict and a contrast between what you are desiring to feel to feel, and what you are actually experiencing trying to apply old methods to a current situation. That will always set you up for some sort of frustration, sadness, or uh, just disappointment, quite frankly. I had a client one time that around a particular holiday, they would become extremely sad about the loss of one of their parents. And the loss of that parent had been many, many years prior to that. But they would always set it up. It, it would be the, the actual day of the holiday would be talked about months before the actual event, about how sad it made them, about the memories of how much they missed the parent. And, and it was like this, you, I could see it being set up for disappointment for the day of. You know, you, we have to take a responsibility for our emotional capacity. That's the reason I do this show is to not only tell you uh, different things from maybe, you know, my experience or working with clients and their experience, or even bringing some science into this, you know, the neurological and the, and the brain and how that impacts our emotions and our amygdala and our hippocampus, you know, all that good stuff. Right. But it's really about saying to you, the listener or the viewer, what are you doing to take responsibility for your emotions? And if you don't know what to do to take responsibility for those, then here's some tools for you. Here's some tools for you. I don't know about you, but I don't like it when my emotions take me for a hijack, right? I, you know, I think you've probably all heard about the, you know, the amygdala and, and the emotional hijacking that can occur. You know, the amygdala, amygdala being that part of our brain, you know, the emotional, uh, you know, center of things. And, you know, and when that attaches to something, how we can just kind of get lost in that and that fury of emotion. I don't know about you, but I don't like to allow my emotions to lead me through my life. I like to take that power that I have for that I have turned over willingly doesn't feel willingly all the time, but I have willingly turned over my power, my emotional power to emotions. And then I find myself like on this roller coaster, either uh, avoiding or overreacting or becoming a drama queen. You know, let's overthink why I feel the way I feel like all of that stuff. And really it's about what am I doing to set myself up for success in the future? And so why I talk about the holiday today is because so many of us have been pre-programmed to believe that it is supposed to look a certain way. And I just want to honor you to let you know that you get to set this holiday season up though ever, however the hell you want to, you know, whatever that looks like. And if you want to fall into a traditional practicing of the holiday, there's nothing wrong with that. Just allow yourself to set yourself up with success. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you're lonely, then find somewhere to go and be around people who are going to compliment you and enjoy your company. Partake in events when you don't want to partake. If you're a single person who is at home by yourself around the holiday, pick up the phone and call somebody and ask if you may come over and join them. It's taking ownership of our happiness. Happy doesn't fall on us. You know, sometimes there's I think the best way, you know, if it ever falls on us is because we're graced with the beautiful sunsets and sunrises and, you know, just the nature of life around us, which, you know, we can you know say that's God given perhaps. But ultimately, when it comes to the circumstances in our life, we are absolutely responsible for our happiness and how we choose to set that up in the future. So if this holiday season, if it's a rough one for you, if it's a rough one, if you lost somebody recently, like myself and my own family. You know, the pandemic was brutal in regards to taking lives, no matter what your belief is around that. It would, people passed away. There is a void where there used to be an actual living, loving energy for millions of people. And that energy feels like it's not present today. And also depending on your beliefs, I don't want to go too woo-woo on you, but I mean, ultimately, physically, they are no longer there to celebrate or to uh, take part in that family tradition, maybe. That can be really hard and it can be really sad. 
And the message I'm trying to convey to you today is embrace the sadness and take some ownership to set yourself up for a happy holiday because it is possible. You know, I'm going to get back to uh, that story about the client and really setting the ball rolling months ahead before the actual holiday, uh, reminiscing about what it used to be like. I believe that there is a time and a place to reminisce. I can say that, you know, looking back on the memories of my father, even growing up or as adults around this holiday time, you know, the for me, I lived thousands of miles away. So it was always the holiday phone call. A couple of times I was able to actually make it back to that, you know, to the, where they live to visit. Uh, but, but that is sadness. You know, the sadness for me around this holiday comes when I watch my elderly mother be in assisted living thousand miles away and wondering who's going to take care of her around Christmas or who's going to give her company and finding a solution within me so that I don't become the one to overly fix everybody's sadness. I don't know if any of you ever do that where you overextend yourself to try in an attempt to fix somebody else's sadness because their sadness is just too much for you to witness. That can happen around this time of year. You know, for, for the crazy moms who are trying to make everything, you know, great for their children, you know, but they're losing their mind in the middle of it, you know, trying to engage in all the activities or uh, adhere to expectations that's been set out there. And yet, in the middle of it, they're busy and they're crazy and the, and the holiday go, flies by and maybe they don't even get to enjoy it. You know, what can you do today to stop that roller coaster from taking you too far? In regards to the date, you know, uh, in my life, what I have witnessed and what I have experienced with clients or with myself is there can be a decision made around the importance that we place on particular holidays or events. And the good news about that is, is we get to determine how much emphasis we place on it. I will share with you that when a decision is made to change of how we perceive a particular holiday or a particular event, that is a very first step in reestablishing a new way of living with a new decision towards a holiday. However, Unless it's an absolute like light switch moment where we are completely uh, awakened to a new perspective on that date or on the sentiment around that date, or we, we like a whole new set of beliefs and experience have, have downloaded upon us, likely, if that has not, you know, that's the only exception, but likely that doesn't happen like that. Like we make a decision to choose to deal with a holiday differently or an event differently in our life so that we have a different experience. However, we are still trailing behind us old beliefs that are still kind of trickling in. And so there's a process involved to where we actually can make a change in our view of that holiday. What do I mean by this? When my dad died, when he passed away, I had already made a decision when it came to dates, primarily because I'm a sober alcoholic. Uh, and I already made a decision not to make too big of a deal around dates. I like to celebrate, but I don't place a lot of emphasis on it. And I don't talk, when I say I don't put a lot of emphasis on it, I'm just not one to base how I feel tremendously on the day of. And so I kind of keep in check my expectations. And that's why I'm, you know, that's why I'm talking about expectations today. I kind of just keep in check that this is just another day, how much emphasis I place on that will also determine how happy or sad I may become if things don't work out the way I think they should. So when my father wasn't around for that first Christmas, seven days after he died, um, I had some sense of okayness with me because I knew that Christmas was just another day. My sadness came from witnessing my mom have to get through it and yet balancing that with gratitude that I could be there with her somewhat in a grieving state, but yet okay, because I had already shifted my perception around the importance of certain dates and holidays. I'm not saying that these aren't moments to celebrate or have a good time. What I'm saying is when it comes to your emotional wellness, if this time of year is emotionally triggering for you, if you go through bouts of depression, if your sadness seems higher, if you experience extreme self-pity because you're, you think you're missing out on something or you it doesn't look the way you thought it was supposed to look this year, 
If that is something that you're going through, then the things that I'm expressing to you today may help you. Because the cool thing is, as I stated previously, is you are in complete charge of your emotions and how, what you choose to perceive and how you choose to feel about certain events and times and places that you can take all that power back and decide for yourself how excellent of a holiday that you're going to have. Decide for yourself. All right, coming up here shortly, I'm going to take one more break. And when I return, I'm going to be talking about just a summary of tools that you can do during this holiday season so that you may feel better if you are prone to being just sad or emotionally tipped. If, if you're already thinking this is going to be a challenging holiday for me, if you've already started ruminating in that fashion, then stick around, pay attention. I'm going to provide some tools for you on the next uh, session when I come back. Um, having said that, if you want to reach out to me, it's at susandanae.com, or you can email me at growthspurt at susandanae um, if I can be of any service to you. All right, be back. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Know Your Crazy Talk Show. My name is Susan Denae. And you are listening to Emotional Recovery in the Raw. Today's topic has been know you're crazy around the holidays. Uh, the first couple segments I've been talking about what are the symptoms of having a potential emotionally tipping holiday. Uh, I've talked about the you know expectations we place on the holidays. You know, uh, I'll back up just a little bit. You know, most of you have probably been listening to me now for the first, you know, 40 minutes or so. Uh, but the point is, holidays can be emotionally charged times. Uh, we place a lot of our expectations on holidays, sometimes too high of expectations. But the two key things I was really that what were, what I was passionate about as far as doing this show today were two things came up for me in my recent uh, couple weeks, probably because they were being triggered by the Thanksgiving holiday. You know, even though I explained, you know, our Thanksgiving holiday for the most part was it was much, very much success. We still have some family dynamics that we're working out on our end uh, that actually showed itself during this holiday. And one of the things I had expressed to my husband was we can do whatever the hell we want to do on our holiday. If we want to have two Thanksgivings, one at noon and one at four o'clock, then let's do that. I mean, we are a blended family. And so not everything's always, you know, kosher for uh, for everyone. Right. So but. That brings me to the first point, as I said, as you know, as I talked about those things in the first part of the show about expectations, about influence, I, I gave a couple of stories of my own experience of experience of clients that I've coached, you know, how we get through these holidays, but where are we responsible for our emotional happiness is really the point that I'm drilling home today is as uh, stressing to you that if the holiday season, if you are fearful that it's going to be sad for you or it's going to be emotionally tipping for you, then it is up to you to take responsibility for that experience. And the good news about that is that is completely within your power to do so, which means this is the area that you get to have all the control that you want. Even during emotional period of the holiday season, if it is for you, that it feels like you don't have much control, the truth is you do have control. You have control over how you choose to spend your time, how you choose to reflect on this on the holiday, how you choose to perceive the holiday and the level of importance that you provide it into your life, right? Um, and and how you emotionally and mentally ref, did I say reflect back on, on different times? So hopefully all of that just made sense. But now I'm going to dive into what it is that what are some tools and some things that you can do during this holiday season so that you don't come off being miserable uh, so that your expectations align with your happiness. And so that when you go into this holiday season, uh, which I choose to call Christmas, uh, it's a fantastic experience for you. And if it doesn't end up being like super fantastic, you know, maybe Santa didn't, doesn't bring you 20 million toys. I don't know. At least it's a holiday that you get to get through without being emotionally miserable. That is why I'm doing this show today. It can be an emotionally tipping time for many, many people. Um, as you, most of you know, I mean, my background comes in recovery from alcoholism and addiction. And I will tell you the holiday season is rough on alcoholics and addicts. 
because of the emotions that are felt during that time. So if you're in recovery and you're in early sobriety, especially, or you're in later years sobriety and you've lost somebody, uh, you know, you're experiencing grief right now, be gentle with yourself. Uh, and, and understand that there are resources and organizations like AA that are there to help and to serve. Um, and if you're anybody listening to this right now that has been impacted by the disease of addiction and alcoholism in somebody else, you qualify for a program called Al-Anon. And I know Al-Anon is associated with AA and they too have fantastic gatherings around the holidays. So uh, as we would say in recovery, if somebody's got a problem with me talking about that in a public forum, call your sponsor. I really don't care. All right. Okay, here we go. All right. What are some tools that we can do uh, to stay sane around the holidays, right? Two main things come up around the holidays, grief and loneliness. That would be, in my professional opinion, uh, don't have the statistics, haven't done a scientific study for you, but let me just tell you that grief and loneliness are the two that when I see somebody diving deep into the pits of depression or sadness, those are the ones that are coming up the most. We just came out of a pandemic. Millions of lives were lost. Many, many families right now are awakening to Christmas and the holidays without their loved one by their side or without that parent. And this can be a tremendous, tremendously sad time for folks. So I just want to honor that. Okay, I just want to honor that. And here comes the tool. Oh, and loneliness. The grief can feed into the loneliness. But for the single folks out there, maybe you're single because you lost somebody. Maybe you're going through a divorce and this is the first holiday season that you're spending without your family or without your partner. Maybe this is the first holiday season where you're dealing with the kids are divided up all over the place and you don't know how you feel about that. Uh, you're, you're, you're having, you're anxious, you have fear, you want to be angry, you want to judge the partner, or, or there's just, there's a lot of emotion going on. This is for you. This is for you. All right. So here we go. How much time do I got here? I got 11 minutes to get through these tools. So, all right. Number one, pre-plan your day. That would be the number one suggestion I would give to anybody who's coming into the holiday season and you're already sensing that it's going to be a struggle for you. pre plan your day. And since we're coming into what I call Christmas and Christmas Eve, some of you may not do that or call it that, um, pre-plan two days. What, however many days that you need to plan, have a plan. Don't leave it up to your emotions to determine what you're going to do. Um, earlier in the show, I mentioned, you know, if you're somebody who lives by yourself and you're already feeling like, you know, you know, I don't have to explain this to you. You're already feeling a sense of sadness about this coming up. Ask yourself, who could I surround myself with for the holidays? You may be like, I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to do it. Well, it's time to get out of your comfort zone. So your, your choice is you can be, you can choose to be miserable or you can choose to have a different experience. But by pre-planning your day and pre-planning who you're going to be around, you are setting yourself up for a uh, good experience versus a miserable one where you're home all alone. All right, here's another one. If you're grieving this holiday season, and I too have a little bit of grief in my life, you know, it would be second Christmas without my dad. Uh, my mom's by herself in Nebraska. So I've got some grief around this too. But if, if you are somebody who is really grieving, say you just recently lost somebody, say it's very fresh, or this might be one of the first few holidays without them. This is tremendous feedback given to me when I was grieving my father. Schedule your grief schedule your grief. Uh, there's some statistic out there that says that whatever the thought is, I don't know, a minute to three minutes uh, prior, whatever the thought was that you had a minute to three minutes prior, that thought is what fueled the grief. And as many of you know, who have grieved the loss of somebody or even a pet, it really doesn't matter. But when you lost something, what brings up that grief and that sadness is you see something that reminds you of them. Uh, and, and all of a sudden you find yourself, you know, crying your eyes out when you're grieving, it feels like it comes out of nowhere. And, and it, arguably we could say that it does come out of nowhere, but if you really dissect that thought, there was something that you perceived, something that you thought about a minute to three minutes before the crying or the real deep sadness engulfed you. So when I say schedule your grief, you simply set aside time when you can be by yourself and have a, you know, whether it's, let's just say it's a person you lost and just give yourself five or 10 minutes to remember them and do your grieving. It's amazing what it, what a fantastic tool this was for me. 
because instead of it catching me off guard, I was able to reflect during my time that I had pre-scheduled. And so that grief didn't uh, start to, you know, take me off guard too much when I was out shopping somewhere or, you know, because I already thought it and dealt with it in a way. Uh, so schedule your grief this holiday season. So instead of waiting the day of to be overcome with all those emotions, maybe you maybe you sit down and, ref and reflect on the times before the holiday, you know, before you go engage with the family, like whatever that looks like for you. But allow yourself a little bit of grace uh, to schedule that grief ahead of time. Another one I mentioned in the show, and this will be number three, have phone numbers of people that you can call that will be there for you if you find yourself in a tough spot on this holiday season. Um, I shared the story of, of waking up uh, Christmas day when I was recently divorced and nobody was home but me and my one-year-old and there used to be a house full of uh, six of us and how overwhelmingly sad that was for me. It brought me to my knees that morning because the family home that I had envisioned for many years was no longer there. And the sense of loss was heavy and it was burdensome and I just, I could barely move. And what saved me that day was picking up the phone and calling a mentor of mine. And she walked me through literally getting up and getting moving. Sometimes that's the best thing we can do is just get up when you're in the depressed state, just get up and do something. And that's what she did for me that day. But I had the phone number ready to go. I had the phone number ready to go. So if this upcoming holiday season, if you think it's going to be a little crunchy for you, if you think that there's a, a, a potenti potentiality, yeah that it's there that it could emotionally tip you that you're not exactly looking forward to it a hundred percent have some phone numbers nearby have some friends that you can call or mentors that you can call so that you have someone to to help you get through that difficult and challenging time all right uh then the last one what are we on number three or number four i think we're on number four right now so the last one was, you know, here we are, we're, we're just now starting the month of December. I'm going to encourage you, if, if the holiday seasons tend to be a repetitive sadness for you, if there's a loss of somebody in your life uh, throughout the years and this holiday triggers all of that, or, you know, if there's just, you know, maybe um, maybe the, 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 the pull and the, you know, the scheduling and all that stresses you out. Um, I, I have somebody I know close to me that the holiday season, it's always a, a struggle with them and their partner about where they're going and whose parents going to get satisfied and who's not. And I mean, it is just like a battleground almost. Uh, and so why am I saying all of that? So uh, reframing the perspective on the day can go a long way. At the end of the day, it is really just a day. I previously mentioned the amount of influence that is placed upon us in our environment. Uh, when I was looking up uh, for this show and I was doing a little bit of research, I was really concerned. I was like, I was typing up, you know, brain and sentiment. Like what, what, is the, what is the connection between those two? And one of the things that came up was the connection between our physiology, our environment and our personal experiences and how those influence our holiday season. Okay, our physiology, our um, personal experience, and our environment, and how those influence our Christmas holiday. And each one of those things that I just said are unique to every single one of us. And so when you engage in your holiday season for you, part of taking ownership of your happiness is really asking yourself, you know, when I get into the physiology of this, how do I feel? Like, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but we have had sickness seems like everywhere right now. Uh, you know, there's all these theories about why everyone's getting sick right now. Don't matter. It's there. So in this holiday season, are you fully fueled? Do you feel good? Are you, you know, I mean, if, if supplements help you, are you taking your supplements? Are you getting enough rest? You know, this is part of that setting yourself up for success. Like really take a look at what is the physiology going for you? You know, the other one is your environment. What does your environment look like? You know, do, do you want to get a little bit cheery around the holidays? Do, you know, do you have your little decorations sitting around for yourself? Or, or is your environment really stressful? You know, the more stress in our environment, the, the more that we're surrounding ourselves with stress and negativity, the less likely we're going to feel very joyful around the holiday, right? Like, like, you know, there's a conflict there. 
Um, and then last is our personal experiences. Most of us have our predetermined ideas around the holidays, what they feel like, why they feel the way they do. It all comes from most of us from our childhood or our past. You know, that story of my, my divorce situation, I had had a belief and I had had an understanding and an expectation of the way this was supposed to look with my kids. And then lo and behold, everything was going to be switched. And so reframing how you look at this holiday for you will provide freedom for you if this holiday season is emotionally tipping for you, or if you even suspect a little bit that it's going to be emotionally tipping for you, take a look at the physiology that you have right now. Take a look at the environment in which you spend, you know, spend your time with and take a look at your personal experiences up to this point and ask yourself, how are these things influencing my experience today? You know, I'm getting there today by talking to you about this from the holidays, but what I just said could be used in any, any time of the year in your life. How, I'm going to probably use this more often. How is your physiology? How is your uh, environment? And how is your personal experiences up to this point influencing you based on your emotional state that you have? If you want a better emotional state, change it up, change it up. All right. That was a good little tangent I just went on, but that that just kind of resonated. I'm sure you could feel that. Okay, so we're coming to, I'm coming to a wrap of the show. Um, it is the holiday season. I will have a couple more shows before the holiday season, before what I call Christmas and Christmas Eve. Um, remember, if it's an emotionally tipping time for you, set yourself up for success. That is where your power lies. Your power does not lie in the past experiences. Your power is going to lie in today and what you produce for yourself in the future take hold of it because you are a powerful individual. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's going to be a wrap. Hey, if I can be of service to you in any way, um, I do have a few openings for coaching. Be happy, be more than happy to interview you to find out if you would uh, align well with me for a coaching experience. Uh, feel free to reach out to me or if you've got any comments on the show, be more than happy to listen to those also. Uh, email is growthspurt at Susan Denae. You can always instant message me through Facebook at Susan Denae. Or check out my Instagram at Susan Denae or all of the above. All right, folks. So I will see you for the next show. In the meantime, if I don't see you in the next show, happy holidays. Merry Christmas to those who celebrate Merry Christmas. All right. Take care. You have been listening to Know You're Crazy. 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 And my name is Susan Denae. We are identifying, understanding, and treating your crazy one episode at a time. Tune in to TransformationTalkRadio.com. To connect with me or Growth Spurt Your Life, please visit SusanDenae.com. That's Susan Denae, D-E-N-E-E.com.